my gosh. I love it so much, you guys. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Erin Napier won the hearts of millions of people in HGTV's hometown as she was instrumental in revitalizing the historic district of the southern city of Laurel, Mississippi, one house at a time. In its pilot episode, aired in 2016, had the highest rating in the network's history. By its fourth season, it became one of the most watched on cable television. With 2.5 million viewers per episode, it spawned the spin-off series, Hometown Ben's Workshop, which showcased her husband's expertise in carpentry and craftsmanship, and Hometown Takeover and Hometown Kickstart, as the Napiers and other celebrities breathed new life into small towns. Many believe that Erin was living a charmed life, having a great family and successful show, but she struggled with a mystery illness for quite some time and developed mental health issues as a result. Erin Jacqueline Raspberry was born on the 30th of August, 1985, apparently in Laurel, to Phil and Karen Clark Raspberry. For a time when she was young, she thought of her father, a Harrison Ford lookalike, to be Indiana Jones, and her mother, with her style and grace, to be Princess Diana. As she was growing up, Phil worked around the clock as a doctor of physical therapy and the department head of a hospital, while Karen was a homemaker who worked part-time in real estate. She didn't fit in with kids her age, as she recalled, I didn't know the right jokes to tell the right things to like, the right way to blend in our little rural town. Erin did have a friend in one whom she had grown up with in church, but being laughed at, excluded, and bullied by others made her feel lonely and unloved. While she was in fourth grade, she had a sleepover at a girl's house and fell victim to a prank when she became it in a game of hide and seek. Once she finished counting to 100 and came out, all the girls had gone off to a neighbor's house as a joke on her. As Erin went on a field trip to Washington, D.C. for sixth graders, she couldn't find a friendly face when she boarded the bus, and no one wanted to sit beside her. Her mother would often tell her, you are different from those kids, and it will set your life apart in all the best ways. Being loved by her family might have lessened the sting of rejection, but it couldn't erase the feelings that she didn't belong. It took her a while to become confident and comfortable with whom she was. Her mother was creative and she encouraged the artist in Aaron from a young age. The two of them would build history museums out of shoeboxes, paint them with acrylic, and use toy dinosaurs for display. They made animal costumes, hand puppets, and paper mache masks. Aaron developed her penchant for home design in the seventh grade when she redecorated her bedroom in the way that she wanted. When she was older, she would play the guitar and sing at coffee shops in downtown Laurel. She had come a long way from the child who performed on stage in a school play, accompanied by her father, because she was afraid to do it on her own. Ben Napier was born on the 24th of September, 1983, in Mississippi. When he was in sixth grade, his dad sold their farm and truck, went to college, and became a minister. His family then moved around a lot, and the only thing that was constant, he said, was having one another. But he was never lonely, because he was close to his three brothers, Sam, Tom, and Jesse. They looked up to their dad and followed his example in that, if we didn't see daddy doing it, then we didn't need to do it. His father didn't drink alcohol, smoke, use drugs, or get a tattoo. So Ben didn't. He said that his dad found a perfect partner in his mom and treated her like a queen. They were a united front in raising him and his brothers. Ben was taught right from wrong, as well as doing chores at home, from cooking to doing laundry. Erin attended Jones County Junior College, where she met Ben Napier, whom she admired from afar, believing he would never notice her as he was popular and the center of attention wherever he went. He was always with a cheerleader or a beauty queen, and he admitted to having a fair share of girls during those days. He introduced himself to Aaron at an off-campus McDonald's in May of 2004. She was frozen in place and could only give a lackluster answer as she felt intimidated partly because of his charisma and partly his size. He was six feet six inches tall, or two meters, and weighed close to 300 pounds about 130 kilograms. Ben was drawn to Erin and recalled flirting with her once, but being rebuffed, which made him like her even more. He gladly took the opportunity to be with her when he was asked in December 2004 to feature as one of the most interesting persons on campus for a yearbook project in which she was a design editor. The time they spent together was way more than what was necessary for the project as he wanted to get to know her better. It was true what his mom had told him when he was younger. One day you'll find the girl you'll always want to talk to, and that's how you know that's the one you want to spend the rest of your life with. He had fallen in love with Erin after just three days of knowing her, and although it sounded ridiculous even to him, he was sure of his feeling. Within six days, 
He knew that he was going to marry her. Her father's condition was that Ben needed to finish college first. The couple had been inseparable since that yearbook project and all through their college years at the University of Mississippi, from where Aaron graduated with a fine arts degree and Ben his history degree. Ben proposed to her in 2007 at Square Books, their favorite place in Oxford, Mississippi. It was a big production as he wanted it to be special, something that was worthy of their love story. They were married in 2008 at the Paris Yates Chapel in Old Miss. For their anniversaries, Ben would give her a book that documented things that had happened in their lives that year with photos or illustrations and promise her that as long as she was his girl, she would get that book. The couple had two daughters, Helen and May, and although Erin would often share photos of them on her Instagram, she was careful not to show their faces. It was their personal choice, as they didn't want their baby's images to be used for promoting an international kid's brand. Aside from that, they were quite disturbed when people who came to Laurel for their show would become familiar and reach out to embrace their daughters when she didn't even know them. One time, a 54-year-old man who bought a house a few blocks from theirs was wearing a Star Wars Stormtrooper costume and an ankle monitor bracelet and said things such as, God sent me here to protect the women of Laurel, specifically little Helen. The family had 24-hour security officers at home and at work as a precautionary step until the strange man left. For Ben, home had been more of a state of mind than a place, as he called several towns his home. However, he was happy to put down roots in Laurel, Aaron's hometown. Her family owned a 100-year-old Flatiron building that they'd renovated and transformed into their first home. They were on a limited budget, so they found creative ways to execute the design they had in mind. As Ben developed the skills and passion for woodworking, he built a few pieces of furniture from lumber he salvaged from Aaron's great-grandparents' home. They used things that came from or had ties to their families so that it would make them feel more connected. When they first settled in Laurel, it was a sleepy town and for some, a dying town. However, when looking at old dilapidated buildings, what Aaron and Ben saw were possibilities. Both joined Laurel Main Street, an organization of business and building owners who wanted to save the historic integrity of the downtown and attract new investors. It became their mission to return the place into something like its former glory, to change people's perception of living in a small town, and to preserve the value of a tight-knit community. They set out to do just that and started holding festivals to bring people together. Erin designed big murals and signage to promote what was great about Laurel. She launched an online stationery boutique called Lucky Lux that offered custom designs for special occasions. She would blog about her designs and soon, Martha Stewart Weddings was interested in featuring her and the ivory handkerchief wedding invite she designed for a client. It became a hit as people wanted something different yet personal for their special event. As her business expanded, by 2011, it took too much space in their home. So the couple bought a Craftsman Cottage, which was her favorite house when she was little, and renovated it working side by side with experts to make sure that everything was done right. In July 2014, Lindsay Weedhorn, HGTV's Director of Original Programming and Development, emailed Aaron about the possibility of doing a TV series about Laurel. It seemed that she'd been stalking her on Instagram and became interested in their small town. Soon they were meeting the production company, RTR Media via Skype, and then filming a sizzle, a five minute promotion clip so that the producers could pitch the show's idea to network executives. Aaron was also asked to submit sketches she'd made from photographs of rooms as they would be included in the sizzle. She had doubts that anything would come of it. As she said, we love it, Laurel, very much, but that doesn't mean everybody else would. So we had fun and never had any expectations. The pilot episode of Hometown aired on the 24th of January, 2016 and attracted high ratings. So they were then greenlit for a whole season that aired from March to May 2017. The premise was that Aaron and Ben would meet a couple, talk about the kind of home that they wanted, then hunt for possible homes which would be narrowed down to two choices, and then the Napiers would explain what they would do to fix them up, mindful of the client's budget. Once a house was bought, the renovations would begin. After the construction was finished, Aaron, often accompanied by her best friend Mallory, would shop for items and decorate the house making sure to include something that was personal to the client. In his shop, Ben would build a piece of furniture as a gift to the new homeowner. The episode would end with the big revelation. Transforming a home was a moving experience for Aaron and Ben. They said that it wasn't about the fresh coat of paint or the new tile, 
but about the moment when the client stared with wide-eyed wonder at their new home, the realization of a dream. One would think upon watching Erin on Hometown that everything about her life was great, be it her family, friends, community, and career. Not many knew that she was plagued with a mysterious illness for several years and was struggling with mental health issues. Erin was a sophomore in college when she woke up feeling pain at the base of her rib cage. She twisted and writhed as she tried to find a comfortable position, but to no avail. However, the next day the pain was gone. For a time, it would happen once or twice a year, and she'd always thought that it was just a stomach ache, and so was self-medicating. However, the pain became more intense, and she was running a fever. So she went to a hospital where she was given painkillers. After a series of tests and blood work, nothing abnormal was found, except for an elevated white blood cell count, which indicated that the body was fighting off something. Over the years, the pain would last for days and occur more often. So she consulted with many doctors and underwent various tests, but they couldn't get to the bottom of it. One doctor even said that Aaron was the one creating the symptoms and prescribed her with a drug, the effect of which made her not want to try it again. She began to feel hopeless as the fear of not knowing was worse than the pain. She thought it was cancer or some other life-threatening disease, and it took a toll on her life and her business, as she was sometimes too sick, unable to move without pain. In 2014, her ultrasound results came back and a doctor performed exploratory surgery. It was discovered that her internal organs were completely fused together by bands of scar tissue. Her appendix was perforated, which meant that it had been bursting and healing itself over and over again until it spread into the abdominal cavity. That small, thin pouch had partially ruptured and was covered by scar tissue, making it appear normal on CT scans. The appendix and all the scar tissue along with the benign cyst from her ovary were removed. Finally, she was on the mend. Erin no longer suffered from debilitating pain, but began to have panic attacks. Apparently, her condition left a mark on her brain, causing her to become preoccupied with sickness. My brain, without my permission, sets off a fight-or-flight mission to save my life, when my life is not in any danger at all. She opened up about her mental health issues in January 2022, hoping that it would help someone who was going through the same thing. Her Instagram posts were often happy and positive, despite her personal struggles, as she said that it was nice to have this place for editing the hard parts out. There was an outpouring of support and love from people all over, including the actress Drew Barrymore, who left a comment on her post that said, I love you, at Aaron Napier, and this does help to know, and I believe we are lucky to have a window into you that will also help others. Aaron Napier continued to inspire people via the TV series Hometown, her journal, and social media posts as she spread positivity and love for family and community. She was passionate about supporting American manufacturers by featuring products made in the U.S. in her store, Laurel Mercantile, even if she was criticized for how expensive their goods were. As she said, if we're going to be serious about revitalizing small town America, we have to be serious about making things here to keep our hometown strong. Her children's book, The Lantern House, published in 2022, made it on the New York Times best-selling list. Clearly, Erin isn't one to let grass grow under her feet, especially with Ben, her husband, best friend and partner in all the businesses they operate, all obviously appreciated by the continued viewer support of Hometown. Thank you for spending some time with us. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpick these videos which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question in the comments below. Thank you for being with us and we'll see you back tomorrow.